Hello everyone. I am Geeta Kumari, a graduate student at Michigan State University. Today's work will be about a strategy to make the turbine blade stronger by developing a bimodal distribution of the gamma prime phase in a nickel-based superalloy. Most of us like to take flights while traveling, but unfortunately it's costly. There are various reasons involved in high cost of flying. One of these is the engine efficiency. Following the second law of thermodynamics, the efficiency of an engine can be improved by increasing the difference between input and output temperature. Here, we are focusing on increasing the input temperature by enhancing the service temperature of the material. There are several types of material being used here, but our interest is in the turbine blade material, which is nickel based superalloy. They are used here because of its good resistance to deformation, corrosion, oxidation at high temperature, which can vary from 400 degrees Celsius to 1150. Objective of my work here is to increase the strength of material by changing the microstructure. As you know, the mechanical property will severely depend upon the size and the distribution of this gamma prime phase, which has to withstand these dislocations. When these particles are small, dislocation prefers to cut and pass through it. But when they grow in the size, the entire particle spacing increases, and then it prefers to loop or bow around the particle to move forward. In our research, we will develop a microstructure which will have the combination of both. The smaller particles will sit in between the larger precipitates, which reduces the interparticle spacing. So, to move a dislocation, it has to cut through the larger precipitate as it cannot bow around it, and hence the moment of dislocation will be relatively difficult than the conventional mechanism. How I'm going to do this? So, this is a schematic of my planned heat treatment, which involve a two step aging treatment. First, I will solution anneal my samples to get a single phase microstructure, and then I will do the aging treatment on it. So all the microstructure shown in this study has been taken using SEM. So this is the study of as received material supplied by AT Alvat, which has a grain size of 153 micron. It also had spherical gamma prime of around 50 nanometer and the grain boundary delta phase was also observed. After solutionizing at 1000 degrees Celsius for one hour, I was able to dissolve all the gamma prime particles along with the small amount of delta phases. EBSD map was also collected before and after to see the grain orientation, which did not show any preference. In my result, I'm going to show how I have optimized the aging parameter to achieve a bimodal distribution. Initially, I have done one step aging to achieve a single size gamma prime, and then based on the size result, I have combined it for two step aging. The time temperature and the cooling rate has been varied and optimized to achieve the goal of uniform bimodal distribution. So here first result, it was aged at 720 degrees Celsius for 10 hour and then air cooled. In this case, we were able to get fine gamma prime of around 13 nanometer in the size. And then second aging treatment was done at 900 degrees Celsius independently and for two hour and it was air cooled and we were able to see larger gamma prime of around 54 nanometer in the size. Next heat treatment, which kept the time and temperature constant and changed the cooling method from air cooling to water quenching. And in this case, we were able to see larger gamma prime precipitate, but we also saw some gamma precipitate free zone near the delta phase. So based on these results, the next treatment was of two a step aging was combined using 900 degrees Celsius and 720 degrees Celsius. So in this in this uh, heat treatment between the two steps, it was furnace cool and we were able to see by model distribution, but Actually, the smaller precipitates were only confined to some particular area which were close to the delta phases. So in the next treatment, we increased the temperature from 900 to 930, but we were only seeing that change in the gamma prime size, but the distribution remained non-uniform. So the next trial, we changed the second step aging from 720 to 750 and keeping other constant. And also again, we were only seeing the change in the precipitate size, but the distribution remained non-uniform. So in the next trial, we kept time and temperature constant and we changed the cooling method. So it was cooled, in, uh, it was heated at 900 degrees Celsius for two hours and then cooled to room temperature using water quenching and then heated again to 720 for 10 hours and then water quench. And in this case, we were able to see smaller gamma prime precipitate everywhere. So here you can see very clearly how the smaller gamma prime precipitates are sitting in between the larger precipitates. So with this, I would like to conclude that to achieve a uniform bimodal distribution, gamma prime cooling rate played a very critical role and faster cooling to room temperature between the two steps of aging actually helped in getting uniform distribution. So the heat treatment of 900 degrees Celsius for two hours and the water quenched to room temperature and heated to 720 degrees Celsius for 10 hours and then again water quenched was chosen as the reference bimodal distribution, which had the larger precipitate of around 78 nanometer and the smaller one 11 nanometer. 
and as a future work we will do mechanical testing and tm imaging to see how the particle and dislocations are interacting to prove our hypothesis thank you